Hello everybody, this is Abby Alcox. I am back at it with another episode for you. Unfortunately, today I do not have a host. I know the past few episodes we've had co-hosts with the podcast and they will be greatly missed, but that doesn't take away from the awesome story that I have for you today. Before we jump on into it, I did want to mention that There is a giveaway going on on our Facebook and Instagram page because our last few episodes had a connection to shipwrecks in the Great Lakes. I'm giving away a poster, a frameable poster, of all the shipwrecks in the Great Lakes. So not just Lake Michigan, but, you know, Lake Superior, Huron, Ontario, etc. So if you are interested in that, please head over to our Facebook page at Badgerland Journal or on our Instagram also at Badgerland Journal. You just have to like the post and tag three friends who are super interested in Wisconsin history. But enough of that. That's not really what you're here for. You're here for a story of Wisconsin history. And today we are going to be talking about Old Abe. And no I am not talking about Abraham Lincoln. So Old Abe was actually a bald eagle. That was the mascot of the 8th Wisconsin Infantry during the Civil War. He was named after Abraham Lincoln. He became a symbol of Wisconsin Civil War history, and he actually has some ties to more modern wars as well. And Old Abe, during his life, saw 37 battles and or skirmishes. Colonel Rufus Dawes of the Iron Brigade, and the Iron Brigade will most likely have to be another episode. That is a very well-known brigade that involved many Wisconsin infantry during the Civil War. But this general from the Iron Brigade is quoted as saying, Our eagle usually accompanied us on the bloody field, and I heard Confederate prisoners say, that they could have given more to capture the eagle of the 8th Wisconsin than to take a whole brigade of men. And this was because Old Abe really became a, became a symbol or point of pride for the troops, almost like a ceremonial flag. The troops protect him at all costs, probably a little bit more than you should for a bald eagle, but it's a really interesting story, so we're going to get into it. So to start this story, we have to go way back to the beginning. Because how did a bald eagle even come to be part of the Wisconsin 8th Infantry? It all started with Chief Big Sky, or Old Jackson as he was known later in life. And Chief Big Sky was the son of Chief Thunder of Bees. And they were part of the Lac du Flambeau band of Lake Superior Ojibwe. And so when Chief Big Sky was just kind of a teenager... He was walking around the woods and noticed a tall pine tree with mud and sticks in it. And he recognized this as a eagle's nest. And so he watched it for hours, studying it to see if indeed there were eaglets in this nest. And he saw the mom and dad bird come in and out. He determined that yes, there were eaglets in this nest. And he wanted to capture them. So he started by trying to climb the tree to grab the eaglets. After many failed attempts of trying to climb this tree, he then went and got an axe and started to chop down the tree. As the tree began to fall, the eagle's parents started swooping in on him, trying to attack him. Obviously, these are their baby birds. And he was able to fight them off. However, one of the baby birds that were in this nest was killed due to the fall. But there was one that did survive. And so he took this eaglet back to his teepee, where he fed it and he nurtured it for about three to four weeks. This is the eagle that would become Old Abe. So how did Old Abe come to be in the hands of the Wisconsin 8th Infantry? Well, when his father traveled down the Flambeau River to trade with settlers in spring of 1861, his son, Chief Big Sky, followed him. Although I don't think he was a chief at this point, but... By the time this story was being retold, he was a chief. So he met Daniel McCann there. And Daniel McCann offered him a bushel of corn for this baby eaglet. Big Sky accepted his offer. And this is the first time, but not the last time, 
that Old Abe would change hands. So now Old Abe is in possession of Daniel McCann. And 1861 is the beginning of the Civil War. The war is just breaking out. And Daniel McCann cannot serve because he had a childhood accident that caused him to have difficulty walking. And if you know anything about the Civil War, it involves a lot of marching from place to place. So if he can't walk very well, you're not going to be in the army. But despite this, he still wanted to help in the war effort. So his grand plan was to give this eagle to Wisconsin militias. And this would be his contribution to the war effort. And so he went to the Chippewa Falls militia and they refused the eagle. They were like, no, we don't want that. But then he went to the Eau Claire militia and was like, hey, you want this eagle? And they were like, yes, yes, we do. It was Captain, Captain John Perkins that named him Old Abe. And David McLean was one of his handlers. So in the army, and I'll explain what they do in just a little bit. But he is a great primary source that was able to find a lot of this information about. Um, I will link that down below if you would like to go check that out. It was courtesy of the Wisconsin Historical Society. So a lot of this information comes from first-hand accounts, primary sources, which I thought was awesome for this episode. Um, <laughs> whenever possible, if you're ever doing research, go for primary sources. Anyways, enough about primary sources. So... David McLean kind of explains the interaction or the exchange of Old Abe. So basically, Daniel McCann came to them, said, I want to sell this eagle for $2.50, which, you know, doesn't seem like a lot now. That seems like a bargain. But what happened was all of the enlisted men, men in the 8th Wisconsin went and found 10 cents. So they all pulled in this 10 cents until they had enough to buy Old Abe. But then S.M. Jeffers, who was a civilian at the time, walked by and asked what was going on. And after they kind of explained, like, oh, we're buying Old Abe from Daniel McCann um, for $2.50, whatever, he looked at Mr. McCann, Jeffers did, and asked, them, asked him to return their money to the soldiers, which he did. And then Jeffers bought the eagle outright and gifted it to the soldiers. And so the Eau Claire militia, originally nicknamed the Eau Claire Badgers, quickly changed their name to the Eagles to match their mascot. And they all agreed that they would take him to Madison, where they were taking him to Camp Randall for training. And James McGinnis took responsibility. And before they left, they made him a perch for him to sit on. And if you look at, I'll post some pictures on the Facebook and Instagram. The perch looks like a shield with a star in the middle, very patriotic looking. But September 3rd, 1861 is when they took the Stella Whipple down the Chippewa River all the way to Madison. When they arrived, the 7th Wisconsin was about to leave. They had finished their training, about to take off. But they saw the 8th come in and they saw old Abe and they just started getting so excited. They were cheering and screaming for old Abe. And I think this is really the first example of how old Abe became not just the 8th's mascot, but part of the Union Army's mascot. Because you'll see multiple examples of people coming up wanting to see old Abe. And one example of this was Governor Alexander Randall, who, while he was at camp, while the 8th was getting trained, he... Um, took a huge interest in old Abe. He wanted to examine him. He brought friends to the camp to be like, hey, look at this eagle that my Wisconsin 8th has. He's pretty cool, isn't he? Um, but it was decided at Camp Randall that old Abe would join them in battle, and therefore he continued his journey south. His journey south would take him all the way to St. Louis. So the 8th left Madison on October 12th, 1861, and their journey took them two days. When they got to St. Louis, old Abe, still being an eagle wanting to stretch his wings out, um, escaped when they got to St. Louis. And the soldiers were fraught. They were trying to find him. They thought they had lost him because, mind you, old Abe was still a wild eagle. Now, later in his life, I do think that he got domesticated. 
to the point where he wasn't really going to go anywhere because they were feeding him food. And what animal doesn't want free food? But he's still an animal. He still wants to fly. He still wants to spread his wings. So they had kind of given up hope. But then a policeman walked up to them with old Abe on his arm and was like, did you lose this eagle? And they were like, yes, yes, we did lose that eagle. Can we please have him back? While they were in St. Louis and really anywhere they went, other soldiers would seek them out and come to admire old Abe. They'd ask him quite, they'd ask the eighth questions about what he did in battle, what did he eat? They really were just impressed by old Abe, and it was a point of interest for many soldiers, even outside of the eighth. And when he was in battle, he was given a place next to the flag. And like I said, his perch was shaped like a shield. What would happen is old Abe would be attached to his perch by a small rope that would allow him to fly a few yards. So when they were marching into battle, he usually was only given three feet of slack because obviously you don't want old Abe to just be like flying 20 yards around. You want some control of him. But when they were in more casual situations, um, he would be able to go out as far as 20 yards. That's how, or 20 feet. That's how long the cord was. However, he would cause trouble when he would free himself because he does have his claw and a beak so he could peck and tear at that rope. And he once delayed the regiment by a whole hour when he escaped. He was recaptured by a young soldier, a young soldier who apparently risked life and limb to return him, which might be a slight exaggeration. But like I said, these soldiers really cared about old Abe. It became their pet, their friend. So oftentimes they would do anything to protect and to make sure old Abe was well taken care of. In many times in battle, it was commented that soldiers would fight harder in battle, in battle to make sure to protect him. Now, I did say I'd explain what an eagle bearer is. So an eagle bearer is not a official position in the army, believe it or not, because not every company infantry brigade has an eagle. But the 8th did. And so an eagle bearer because they were taking care of old Abe. They got off of guard duty and fatigue duty. They, this was their kind of job in camp. And so mainly they had to make sure that old Abe was fed. He was kind of a picky eater McGee. While old Abe would primarily eat fresh beef, he would also sometimes eat rabbit or, or squirrel if the soldiers could catch one. And on rare occasions, he got spoiled with some chicken and duck. He also really liked minnows from the creek, but he was a very picky eater. He was picky eater McGee. And now I can hear you saying you just listed about six or seven different things that old Abe would eat. What are you talking about that he's a picky eater? And I'm not talking necessarily about the type of meat he would eat, but if anything was like slightly bad like the meat was going slightly rotten, whatever, would not eat it. Which is kind of weird for eagles, who are known for being like scavengers that will just eat about anything. <laughs> they have a little bit of a stronger stomach than uh, humans do. But he got spoiled and would not eat anything. It had to be fresh, good meat. Um, <laughs> but the soldiers, loving him anyways, did their best to get rations to him, and they would actually give up par portions of their food in order for old Abe to eat. So then one of the first battles that old Abe took part in was the battle at Farmington. So this probably isn't a very familiar Civil War battle, but the Battle of Farmington was a smaller skirmish that happened in the siege, siege of Corinth. Now I'm going to be talking about later in this episode, the second battle of Corinth, because there were two battles that were happening in the same city over the course of a couple of months. So the first part, so the siege is the first battle. And this is where the Union Army is trying to take Corinth away from the Confederate soldiers. So in this battle, Old Abe is with it, with the 8th. And I mentioned that James McGinnis is his handler. And someone said to McGinnis, like, go towards the back of the line, protect old Abe. 
And so he did. And when he got to the back of the line, he realized he was out of range of the guns and the cannons. And he was like, all right. And he doesn't really lie down on the ground to seek cover because he's like, I'm out of range. There's no reason. I'm fine. However, there were other soldiers around him and old Abe that were lying down. So old Abe began to imitate the soldiers. He kept hopping off of his perch onto the ground with the soldiers. McGinnis kept trying to put old Abe up on his perch so he would stay there, but he kept hopping down. Eventually, McGinnis went, well, this is futile, and joined old Abe and the rest of the soldiers on the ground. When the soldiers got up to charge, then old Abe returned to his perch and was like, I'm ready! So Old Abe really was attached to these soldiers, really did mimic them. And it was during the Battle of Farmington, Old Abe, Old Abe started his very well-known um, of spreading his wings and screaming during the battle. And this just really motivated the men. This got them excited, made them fight harder. You know, who wouldn't want a screaming eagle by their side when you're going into battle. Kind of makes you feel like, makes you feel tough. However, this would be the last battle that James McGinnis, the first and only battle James McGinnis would carry old Abe through. And this is because, um, not this is not because McGinnis died in the Battle of Corinth, but he got sick very soon after this battle and he died May 30th, 1862 in the hospital. And it was Thomas J. Hill that would become the bearer, take over as bearer from McGinnis. And Hill would serve as bearer from May 30th all the way to August 18th. And this is when he got reassigned to a different job. Daniel McLean then took over as Eagle Bearer. As I mentioned, Daniel McLean is one of the best primary sources we have about Old Abe. The siege of Corinth comes to an end. The Union forces are able to push out rebel forces from the city. And now they're just occupying Corinth. And so the 8th is just stationed in Mississippi for a little while. And because of this, for two months, Old Abe is given a lot of freedom. Because they're staying in the same place, he was very familiar with the area. He was allowed to fly around the brigade, but he always returned back to the 8th Wisconsin. And like I said, I think partly this is due to the fact that the 8th Wisconsin is constantly feeding him, giving him water, protecting him. You know, he doesn't really have to do the hard work of being a wild eagle. So he continued to return to the people that would feed him. He was also taken to the creek two to three times a week to bathe. His favorite thing was just splashing around in the creek. And after this, they never really allowed old Abe the freedom that he experienced in Mississippi, like I said, because they were never staying in the same place long enough for him to become familiar with the land. Or, you know, Confederates around, they didn't want them shooting old Abe. Because he would become well known, not only in the Union Army, but also the Confederate Army. And while this is all going on, Daniel McLean actually taught old Abe how to drink out of a canteen while he was old Abe's bearer. And this is because while they're on these long marches, they can't stop to let old Abe drink out of the creek. But if he's water sitting in the hot sun all day, he needs water too. And like I said, Daniel McLean, he teaches him to drink out of the men's canteen. And he's quoted as saying, there was not a soldier in the regiment, but would have divided his last drop of water to quench old Abe's thirst. Like I said, these soldiers loved old Abe. They would protect him, take care of him. And while they were in these various camps throughout the war, generals like Grant, Sherman, McPherson, or other generals just coming through would always see old Abe and they would raise their hats at him when they passed. Now this caused the soldiers to cheer and celebrate. This would always kind of, this would prompt old Abe to then spread his wings and scream. One thing to know is Old Abe did not like strangers. And because of this, he once alerted the company to a rebel courier that he spotted. And like I said, he did not like strangers, so I think he started screaming or causing a fuss, and the men were able to catch this courier. But the interesting part is he would always trust men in uniform. 
So if the generals would come up, if other soldiers would come up to him, he was loving it. He loved the attention. But if it was just a random person he did not recognize, he did not like them. However, years after the war ended, men of the 8th would approach Abe and they were welcomed as old friends, which they were. Um, but he definitely recognized the people who had taken care of him during his early life. The following fall is when the Second Battle of Corinth happens, and the Wisconsin 8th is also involved in this battle. And in this battle is kind of Old Abe's most memorable moment in many soldiers' minds. And this is because during the battle, his rope is cut by a bullet from the enemy. And this wasn't a stray bullet. It is said that General Price and Van Dorn of the Confederate Army told their officers to take the eagle dead or alive. And this information had come from captured prisoners. Price had declared he'd rather capture the bird than a whole brigade. So if you remember the quote from the beginning, this is kind of where that information is coming from. So if you remember the quote from the Iron Brigade General from the beginning, this is where it's coming from. It's from Price saying, capture this bird dead or alive. I want it over a whole brigade. So these Confederate soldiers are shooting at old Abe. <laughs> they want to take old Abe. And like I said, this is because old Abe had become a rallying point, a morale booster, something that the men believed in. So if you can take this symbol from them, it's going to break their morale, bring them down. Which is why... And you just think it's odd because you think you'd keep those bullets for, you know, men that are trying to kill you, not an eagle. So the bullet does not hit old Abe. Instead, it hits the rope and old Abe takes off soaring across the battlefield. And when he's done flying around, he returns to his perch. This comes from a primary account from a officer at the time. And in this account, he says that the story has been greatly exaggerated, but he has told the truth. I'm not quite sure what exaggerations he was referring to, but as it turns out, his account is kind of an exaggeration in and of itself. So what really happened was the Wisconsin 8th joins the battle, and they're trying to let the enemy get close and then surprise them. And so the rebels attack and they try to get to Old Abe. That part of the story is true. One of the bullets cuts the cord, and old Abe does take off. But he doesn't fly high above the battlefield. He flies about 10 feet off the ground, 10 feet off the ground, and about 50 feet away from his pedestal. Now, David McLean, his eagle bearer at the time, takes off after him, goes to grab him, gets him back in place, ties him back to the pedestal. And during this escape, there is record of him being shot. So old Abe is shot through one of his wings. David McLean also has some near misses because he has been shot through the shoulder of his shirt and the right leg of his pants, but neither one drew blood. So they must have missed him, but just torn right through his clothing. So, no, he did not fly over the battlefield, despite what newspapers the next week would report. He would get very excited in battle and spread his wings and scream, but he would never fly overhead. They always had control of him. The funny thing is, is this did not stop rumors from getting around. Jesse Cole, who was a member of the 8th during the Civil War, after the war worked in a, in a Iowa soldier's home. One of these soldiers was telling him stories of old Abe, not realizing that he was part of the regiment who had old Abe. And this veteran told him that old Abe took a stone and rose up into the sky above the Confederate soldiers and began dropping stones on their heads. <laughs> Which I think is an amazing story. However, 100% not true. Great stories to continue telling. It was after the after this battle that David McLean resigned his position as Eagle Bearer. And this was in December 28th, 1862. And this is because old Abe's wings were clipped to try and prevent him from flying away again. 
However, David McLean disagreed with this decision. He did not think Old Abe's wing should be clipped, and he resigned kind of in protest. After the Battle of Corinth, Old Abe was given a lot of freedom around camp, which means he got himself into as much trouble as humanly possible. He tipped over fire pails full of water. He would chase insects around camp. He ended up playing catch with some of the soldiers. And he definitely went around stealing food from different companies. Finally, he would like to attack clothing that had been hung out to dry. And I don't know about you, but I just have this image of this eagle running around camp causing mischief. And then when he's caught, just looking at them like, I didn't do it. One of the other major battles that Old Abe was part of was also the Siege of Vicksburg. Ed Homston was the eagle bearer, and at this time Old Abe weighed from 12 to 14 pounds, and this is the bigger size for a eagle. He was definitely well fed and well taken care of. <laughs> so the 8th traveled to Vicksburg, they got into position for the siege on May 22nd, 1863, and during this Homestead tripped and fell on a log. Now, why is this noted? It is noted because when this was seen, people thought that he or Abe had been shot by the Confederates in Vicksburg. But in the end, they both ended up being perfectly fine. The 8th stayed for the eventual capture on July 4th, 1863. And then it was in September 1863 that Ed resigned. John Burkhart took his place, and was the bearer up until the time that Old Abe retired from the 8th. There is some record that Old Abe was shot in the Battle of Vicksburg in the webbing of his wing. I am not 100% sure if he was shot twice, because this is the same place he was said to be shot in the Battle of Corinth, or if the battles just got mixed up. Either way, Old Abe was shot in the wing, either in the Battle of Vicksburg or the Battle of Corinth, or both. And I know that that isn't a really great story, but what Old Abe did in the Battle of Vicksburg, um, there's nothing too crazy going on. But the reason I mention it is if you go to Vicksburg today, well, if you go to any of these Civil War sites, there's monuments to the different infantry and different units that fought in these battles. So the Wisconsin 8th has a monument at Vicksburg. So if you go to this monument, there is an eagle on the top of it symbolizing Old Abe. So one thing to note is in the Civil War, men had three-year enlistment periods. So 1864 rolled around, and there had to be a discussion of would Old Abe stay with the men who were re-enlisting or return home with the men who were up and done with their enlistment. It was decided that Old Abe would not be re-enlisting in the war. So the veterans of the Civil War arrived back to Madison in September 1864 with their eagle. And at this time, Captain Victor Wolfe of the Company C presented Old Abe to Governor Lewis. Governor Lewis accepted him on behalf of the state. So they were really giving Old Abe over to the state, thinking that it wasn't fair to have one man keep Old Abe to himself. Old Abe was going to continue to be a symbol of the state of Wisconsin. So Old Abe lived in the capital in Wisconsin. He was able to live in what was known as the Eagle Department, which was in the basement of the Capitol, and he would live there for 15 years. Now, what is the Eagle Apartment? The Eagle Apartment included a caretaker, a two-room apartment with a custom bathtub. Now, as a poor, broke college student, that sounds fantastic. I want to be the Eagle and get my own, like, two-room apartment with a custom bath. But Old Abe would bring thousands of visitors to the Capitol to come and see him. He also starred in many fundraising events, and these were charity events usually for veterans or for politicians, many of them in Wisconsin or in the Midwestern states. However, he would venture outside of the Midwest. On one occasion, he even went to Pennsylvania. He earned thousands of dollars at these events. Even though he was a well-known symbol of the state, this did not prevent individuals from trying to buy Old Abe. In 1865, a wealthy individual offered $10,000 for Old Abe. Okay, just to help you put that into perspective, in, the eight, in 1860, $10,000 would be worth $335,906 today. 
It's a lot of money for an eagle. Just saying. But that was not even the highest offer that they received for old Abe. That came from the legendary circus master P.T. Barnum, who offered $20,000, twice that amount, for old Abe. Both of these offers were rejected. Old Abe stayed in Wisconsin. And the next phase of old Abe's life is what I would like to call murder at the Capitol. And this is because old Abe had a roommate for a while. And this was because Timothy the Golden Eagle, a.k.a. Phil Sheridan, a.k.a. Andy Johnson. Anyways, him and old Abe did not get along whatsoever. In fact, they fought often, attacking each other, just getting into fights. And in 1873, old Abe attacked Andy Johnson, and he sunk his talons into the back of his neck. Andy Johnson then died the following spring, likely from the side effects of having that attack. The irony was he was stuffed and placed along old Abe when they both eventually perished. So even though they hated each other, they were together till the bitter end. Although I also want to point out, which it kind of made me think, because I did look up, golden eagles can be the same size as bald eagles. And if Andy Johnson was not as tame as old Abe, I'm surprised that old Abe was able to like get a jump on him. Because you'd think it'd be the other way around, that the domesticated eagle would be attacked by like the less domesticated eagle and, like, killed that way. But no, old Abe not having any of it. This was his eagle department. He was not Sharon. So that is what I like to call the murder committed by the beloved old Abe of Andy Johnson. Although some would say maybe it's justified. Andy Andy Johnson was coming into his space. Could not have that. Anyways, so in 1881, a small fire broke out in the basement of the Capitol. And old Abe was able to raise the alarm and call attention to this, and the fire was put out. However, during this, he inhaled too much smoke. And because of this, his health began to decline. He refused to eat food and lost a lot of strength, and his spirit just went down. And it was March 26th, 1881, so a month later, that he died in the arms of his caretaker, George Gillis. He was then stuffed and mounted so he could be displayed in the Capitol. And he stayed in the rotunda of the state Capitol for 20 years. He was even visited by Theodore Roosevelt, who thought it was so cool he was able to see this war eagle that he had read about when he had gone to school. He was briefly moved to the State Historical Society in 1901. However, he was returned to the Capitol in 1903, because many veterans pressured La Follette, the governor at the time, to return him to the capital. However, this would bring the second end to old Abe. This is because in February 26, 1904, the capital burnt down to the ground. Everything was burned completely, including old Abe's body, which was inside the capital. However, today, A replica of Old Abe can be found in the assembly chamber of the Wisconsin State Capitol, as well as the Wisconsin Veteran Museum. So now you're sitting here going, Abby, you must be done with your podcast because Old Abe, his body died. There can't really be anything else to like sprinkle in there. Oh, but there is. Because there is a controversy surrounding Old Abe. And that is the question. Was Old Abe actually a girl? And this started in 1889, about eight years after Old Abe's death, by Lily Devereaux Blake, who was a well-known suffragette. And she claimed that Abe was female. She claimed to have regularly seen Abe lay eggs in the state capitol. And this was supported by one soldier from the 8th that said he saw a colonel eat Old Abe's eggs during the war. In addition, Old Abe's taxidermist also thought this was possible because Old Abe was on the larger side of the eagle spectrum, and it seems that females tend to be, seem to be larger than their male counterparts. 
However, members of the Eighth were offended by this claim. I think they were a little bit upset thinking that this suffragette was trying to turn old Abe into a female, even though he wasn't. So I'm sure at this point you're sitting here going like, how did no one ever tell old Abe was female or male? Like, should have been pretty obvious, right? Well, apparently, inkles can be a little bit hard to differentiate when it comes to their gender until, like, they're actually mating. Which old Abe never did. He never mated with anyone. Therefore, this controversy persisted all the way up until 2016. And this is when UW Madison did testing on four of old Abe's feathers to determine if he was male or female. The results, drum roll please, he was indeed a male. So that ended the controversy, but I just thought that was kind of a fun little story to add in there. So I'm going to leave you with the fact that Old Abe continues to be part of our military history today. So if any of you have seen or read Band of Brothers on, I think it's HBO now, you will be familiar with the 101st Airborne. This is a very popular part of the U.S. military. The 101st Airborne are known as the Screaming Eagles, and their mascot is based off of Old Abe. And so there are still different symbols of an eagle in the military that can be traced back to Old Abe. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to this story of Old Abe and learning about this famous eagle. And so if you enjoyed this podcast, make sure to share it with your friends and family. Check us out on Facebook at Badgerland Journal or on Instagram also at Badgerland Journal. If you want to send us an email, let us know how we did, send us ideas, or comment your own stories that you've heard about Old Abe, send us an email at badgerlandjournal at gmail.com. Until next time, guys, keep her cheesy.